Welcome. Welcome again to Arizona Real Estate News or House Stuff with Pat. What's your rate? McMaster's Jacqueline Smith, Century 21, Arizona Foothills. And Ruby is missing today. Um, she joined the union and hired a manager and she's direct asking for more pay. So we're in uh, negotiation. <laughs> yep. We'll but see. It's the right to work state. So I don't know what she's trying to do here. So <laughs> she's in trouble. Yeah, she's traveling. But I want to let everybody know that we still have a sponsor, and it's Red Hog Media. And they've got this cool photography and videography preparation checklist. Things to do prior to your photography appointment. You know, things like remove the following, clutter on the countertops, items on the refrigerator, pet bowls, hanging towels and rags. Did you, know, you say pit bulls? Yeah, no, pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but yes, and pit bulls. That would make sense. So they got the and this thing about the exterior and all that stuff. So anyway, it's just a handy dandy little spreadsheet, the <clears throat> little document there to look at. And uh, we're going to talk about kind of where the market is a little bit today because it's really slowing down and we're getting uh, close to Halloween. And uh, can you guess which one's me? The bunny. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's my cute and uh and i think i had another one here let me let me pull this off and because uh i was just going through some old photos here and this this one cracks me up on a couple different levels this is me and my brother oh how and cute my dad with one of those great big argus flash bulbs you know the kind that you oh yeah grew in and, they just, poof, and, he, and he's taking it in front of a window <laughs> <laughs> so i thought that, that like was do they have color? Do they have color pictures back when you had uh, when you were growing up? <laughs> well, for a while there, you know, and it's it's funny. It was dad was taking black and white for the longest time, but he told me that you know to get color slides developed, it was almost a day's wages. Wow! <laughs> and you had to send them off to Seattle, and then you waited. When we, I was in a filmmaking class uh, in high school, 1973, and we had the 35, you know, the little uh, Super 8 cameras and we were making yeah. a video and we and my boys it just cracks them up when i tell them this because they're all into video and instant gratification and you can get it and we had to mail it to seattle and wait 10 days to get that three and a half minutes back funny so it's kind of funny so let's not age yourself okay rick let's let's uh <laughs> yeah yeah well you know it's fun to talk about the old stuff and uh, so yeah. but look at this zillow lays off 300 employees in the latest work place shift and what they're doing is they're getting rid of that department that was concentrating on loans and buying and selling homes they're going to get just back to their digital experience so that's kind of interesting and then pat we're going to talk about this a little bit kind of surprising gdp went up at a 2.6 percent pace in q3 better as growth turns positive there's probably some devil in the details there mm. Crumford Market Index, you can see while it's gone down here, it's actually kind of flattened out a little bit. And I think that's kind of seasonal supply coming up, getting to where it was in 2016. And then demand down, but little tiny tick up. And that's, it's about 100 to 150 is about all it is. If I look at my seven day moving average here, you can see there's a little tiny tick up there. Uh, but new listings are still still coming down. And I expect um, on the, let's see, the first is what, uh, Monday or Tuesday? Um, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. We're going to see a huge spike in expired listings. We usually run at the end of the month about five or 600. I'm guessing 1,000. And so that makes realtors that spend the day calling expired and canceled really happy. So um, <laughs> here again is the, Demand index and supply, they're just kind of meeting in the middle and it just kind of is flattening out. And this is cumulative days on market. This has changed quite a bit from September 46.4 days and now 54 days. So they're, the homes are staying on the market longer, that's for sure. One of the last numbers I got is you always get these questions. Well, what's going to happen after the election? Well, nothing. Somebody said that everybody's going to move out of the state of Arizona if Carrie Lake wins. Like, okay, well, they didn't. Here's 2016, big election, right? So let's go. There's 
Q2, Q2, and here's Q3, and here's Q4, which would include November. So the trend stays the same, and it's seasonal. So we did, you know, come down a little bit, go up a little bit in 2016. And then you could see here in 2020, not much changed in Q4 as well. You know, it kind of stayed the same. And, of course, here we are in 2022. We're just down because of reasons that are not due to the election. But here's our consumer sentiment. University of Michigan was in the doldrums in 1980 when Volcker jacked up the rates, right? The economy was suffering greatly. And 1981, 82, our consumer sentiment was low. And then it took off. So we dipped back down again in 1990. This is the dot-com crash. Mm -hmm. Down here, 2000, we all know what happened there. No, I can't remember what happened there. What's 2000? Oh, that, that was kind of the internet, uh, the internet.com. Oh, explosion. okay, okay. Explosion. And of course, 2008, everybody was feeling pretty, pretty bad about things. And then uh, September 2011, after the towers got hit, consumer sentiment way down, and we're way down here in July and popped up a little bit in August, and it's probably going to slide down a little bit. With consumer sentiment low, this is what's telling you that buyers are, you know, just not in the mood. So that's uh, kind of one of the things we're seeing out there. But, uh, Pat, what in the world is going on in the lending news with any impact with that new GDP report? Yeah, I mean, we saw, we've seen a little bit of a relief rally. I mean, we've seen these uh, right here. You can see um, the 10 year. I mean, the last couple of days we've seen a relief rally. Rates have come down a bit. I mean, um, you know, is this, it's, you're seeing this the last couple of days. I mean, obviously, you're seeing this ceiling right here, 428. Um, and there's another ceiling at 433. So, I mean, obviously, right here this day, we saw it hit 434 and back off. So, we're seeing some resistance on the rates coming back down a little bit. But with the GDP, I mean, obviously, the PCE numbers coming out tomorrow. I mean, the, the GDP numbers obviously came in at 2.6. But I think from what I understand is that um, <coughs> there was a lot behind. You said there's a lot behind the numbers. Um, it has to do with the imports, exports. Obviously, imports have been, in, I guess, you know, from what I understand, it kind of a negative territory here recently since the pandemic. And it kind of turned around. But then the exports have been obviously – you know, bolstered by this, uh, by the dollar. So I wonder, you know, obviously at 2.6, you know, what kind of play in numbers is there? Like, just like you said earlier. So, well, I did, uh, I did read something about, um, that it's not expected to stay that high, that it's going to change. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, next, next quarter. Yeah. There's a lot of talk, obviously a lot of people, a lot of, talk underneath the surface that uh, things are slower than what they really are, you know? So just wondering how, what kind of games are being played with the numbers. If you can play, you know, games with the numbers, obviously to try to make them look as good as possible. You know, like you said, Biden said at 8.3 or 8.4, there's no inflation, you know? So <laughs> I don't, one of you guys have, has a truck backing up or something. I can hear it on my end. Beep, beep, yep, beep. I can hear it on my end too. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I hear a beep too, but I don't know from what. Yeah. There, it went away. Yeah. See, all we had to do oh, was talk right here. It, and it's gone. Not so there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie, what are you seeing in the market? It, for me, it's just been an incredibly slow week. It Yes. It Well, you know, kind of twofold. So, um, with our listings, it's been really super slow. I had a discussion with one of my clients the other day. Um, they inherited a home. They own it free and clear. They were talking about, um, uh, you know, s several of our sellers are like, well, maybe we should just rent for a bit. And uh, she made the comment, you know, maybe we'll just rent for six months. We'll wait till the market comes back and we'll list it then because prices will be up next year. And so I said, well, let's have a discussion about that. I said, I, I don't really expect any kind of movement upward. I, I think we're going to be very stagnant. We may see, a, um, I think we adjusted fairly quick. This is just my opinion. So, I, and, and I do think the iBuyers and such 
contributed somewhat in certain areas other er and certain price points. Other areas, it had no effect whatsoever. And that's just from what I'm seeing, having a lot of listings in those three, four, 450 price point. So anyways, we had a, a, I was on huh? a... I was on a live stream last night with Caitlin McKeg. Mm -hmm. And she said that Tita Tambor from the Cromford Report says that appraisers are now looking at the iBuyer sales as distressed property. Distressed. Yep, they sure are. So I saw the same report with Tina. Um, and the appraisers are giving it a different weight now. So I, I think that will help a little bit. Um, but anyways, back back to this listing. So, you know, we had a discussion. And I said, I, I, I don't see that being the case. And I said, I have an idea if you want to try it. And, you know, back when I started in the market, we had double digit interest rates. And I, I, I know I've mentioned this before. We were like having parties when it went to single. Back then, we got very creative. We did a lot of assumptions. We did a lot of wraps. And so I said, here's your choices. You could put it up for rent and try to self-manage it because she said she was going to self-manage it, self-manage it from another state. I said, or we could try something else. I said, what if we did a seller financing? And so I kind of threw some different terms and scenarios around to her. I said, well, make sure we cover the closing costs, get you some money in your pocket. Um, if we did it at five, five or five and a half percent interest rate, I think people would be jumping all over that. So she said, yeah, absolutely try it. So yesterday I changed the comments in the MLS in the morning and my phone has been ringing nonstop. Oh, and because we know that five yeah. and a half is a sweet spot. Right. And I said, you know, you're, you're not going to get the five and a half. I mean, if you were going to put the money somewhere else, but why not make your money work for you? And I said, and the other thing we can do is even though I don't see the market increasing, we can structure it away and that we'll do a three-year call on it, but we will, and we won't do any kind of prepayment penalty. We'll ask for, like I said, enough down to cover closing costs, um, get some money in her pocket, have market rent at the same time. Their incentive to close to refinance out of it within the years will do a five percent increase per year on value, and if you can get five percent increase per year on value, you're going to be doing better than if you waited, rented it out, and then because you're not going to get five percent next year. So she was like, "Yeah, let's try it," and so we'll see. I've got a, quite a bit of interest in it from that. Yeah, way to go! You got to be creative right now in this mm -hmm. market. It just. Uh... It's the only way you're going to get anything to drum up. But uh, yeah, um, and there's a lot of people that, you know, there's a lot of people that stashed money away. Now, yes, they've gone through it, but during the pandemic, there was so much money flying at people, and they were stashing it away, especially if they were thinking about buying a home. And now it may just be a, a point of, you know, they still want to buy, but they can't qualify. So why not? And so I'm going to have the discussion with a few of our other sellers, uh, even doing wraps. I mean, why not get creative? Let your money work for you. If you're going to get better doing it this way, then you are just renting it and then hoping the market goes up 5% next year. Cause I don't think it's going to do that. No, so, it sure yeah. doesn't look that way. And I, you know, and that's, I was pointing out earlier in the week too, this is our average list price and it's, it's flatlined. Mm -hmm. And I, kind of floated this theory that said maybe it's flatlined because people, instead of lowering their prices, say, well, I'm still going to ask this, but I'm going to contribute to more closing costs. I agree. Or rate buy down. So then, and then <clears throat> as inventory grows, then this will, this number will start to decrease again. But I don't think it's going anywhere in November and December. All eyes are on January and who knows, but let me ask mm -hmm. both of you a question. What do you think of when Jerome Powell says that he wants to see a housing reset? What does that mean to you? I'd like to smack Jerome Powell right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think he wants, God, who knows what that man. Um, Pat, what do you think? I mean, I think he wants to get rates to a point where I mean, it's a big question, but um, <laughs> um, I think, you know, he wants to see the, it got frothy the last year. I mean, you got homes that went from 400, 450 to six, you know, people list them for 650. <laughs> I think um, he wants to get that 
crazy appreciation out of the market and settle, you know. And he's done that. Now he's done that. I think he, well, yeah, he has, but I think he's got, he wants to go even further. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, that, um, I, I, you know, I, we saw, if you think about it, we saw probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight years of appreciation and really two years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think um, it got crazy. And I think uh, he's, I, I think if they do lower rates, I mean, the feds are going to put a stop, you know, the, the increase is 75, you know, it's kind of based on the fact that 75 and 50 basis points in December. But I think, you know, the consensus is that they're going to basically stop for the time being. I don't think they're going to lower them right away. You know, that'd be like uh, just opening up a door and then closing it right away. So I think they're going to keep right. that door open for a while. But I mean, um, you know, I think he's just trying to tap down this appreciation because um, it has gotten out of hand. I mean, yeah, that's my way I read it. That's my way I read it. Housing is he, what thirty percent of uh yeah, yeah circulation number, and he needed to do that, but he should have done it sooner and slower. He did. He's not giving enough time to see the effects. Well, I, there, there's always a delay. So whenever yeah. money's injected into the system, it can take up to eighteen months for it to to start moving stuff around. And when they pull mm -hmm. back, like they are now, it's you know obviously an interest rate hit affects housing immediately. But the prices are going to take time to right. come down. But he's got bigger fish to fry besides housing, and that's and that is fuel. So I, you know, while he's trying to tamp down on inflation, and I know we, you know, we're repeating ourselves here, but uh, you know, until we get the fuel prices down, now there's a diesel shortage, and diesel yeah. prices are going through the roof. You know, the average home that in the Northeast is going to be facing $2,000 a month just in their heating yeah. bill. I think, so I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in quick. I think, um, you know, he's in, in focusing on housing, but I agree with you. I, they've got to get this energy thing, the whole energy situation under control. I mean, <clears throat> I think it's, it's just, they've got to, they've got to do it. They've got to do it because it's tied to everything. And I think if they get, it's not just housing that he's, you know, I, mean, I would, it's frustrating. He's, it's just housing that he's looking at, but, if you're Joe and Mary Smith sitting around the table and your 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 rate went from three and a half to seven and a half seven, and your house you know your proposed housing payment went from you know say twenty two hundred to you know thirty you know seven eight nine hundred dollars, you're also considering the fact that gas, inflation, your groceries, they're throwing that all in their budget and they're saying we can't afford it right now. So I it's, think if if he gets rates if rates do come back down and if they get the inflation coming back down as far as the gas, they, they open up uh, the supply, you're going to see a much more, a much different market. Yeah. Well, let's hope. I mean, there's a, uh, I, I mean, diesel, it's not just housing payments. Housing diesel payment, diesel people are gonna look at. Diesel is uh, going to affect everything. Um, mm -hmm. you know, everything that gets shipped, uh, food, supply, you name it, everything. You're, you're, you're trained. So anyway, it's, uh, I'll get off that high horse, but I think yeah. um, um, I feel from based on the numbers that I'm seeing that we are in a really severe wait and see mode. Yeah. And November, December are that anyway, because it's the holidays. Mm -hmm. and so January, I think we're going to see inventory. We're still at 20,600, believe it or not. All we still made it now. And it's still made it there. That's going to drop naturally as we get closer to Thanksgiving and it's going to come down. And if we get the increase in listings in January, I'll bet it only goes up to 12,700 again. Um, yeah. That I don't think we're going to see a surge because nothing fundamentally in the market will have changed. We're not going to see a right. reduction in January. If not, it'll be, it'll be slightly higher, you know, and the bond markets wrestling with that now bouncing, bouncing around. So um, all eyes are on January, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're in a big stalemate, a big stalemate market. I mean, um, you know, <clears throat> you know the, the foreclosures. I mean, the loans. I guess that were past due are, have decreased from three percent to two point eight. Um, I'm seeing here that's reading loans that are ninety days or plus decreased from one point three to one point two. So I mean, um, you know, the delinquencies have improved. It said here 
and remain at very healthy levels. So I, you know, the crash, you know, once again, like we had talked about looking at the COVID, when, when the COVID started with it, oh, things are just going to be just blow up. It, as it came, time came, it just kind of, kind of just melt, you know, rolled itself out out of the way. And I think we're just in the stalemate of market. Um, if rates do come down, I think there'll be an inflection point. If values do come down a little bit more and rates do come down that five, people are okay with five, five and a half. Mm -hmm. take. But I think, um, you know, that's when, there's a there's a there's a buffer in this market. It just yeah. seems that way. People are people are. I'm I'm hearing and seeing from people that they're still positive about buying. I mean, it's you obviously took the cherry off the top of the um, off the uh, shake because the last couple of months. But I still think it's 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 just an interesting market. It's just sitting it like you know, like you know, people are like you said, Rick. People are just sitting there like this. The the buyers are like, hmm, okay. Well, I think too, you know, there, there's, I want to see prices come down and there's a misconception that realtors are very disappointed in that because they only make money when prices go up. You know, we're paid to manage the transaction. So whether prices are going up or going down um, doesn't drive our decisions if you want to buy a home. So, you know, we're used to going up and down. So I, I, I find it a little uncomfortable when people say, Oh, you realtors are crying. No, I'm not. I'm not, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it is what it well, is. And it's I think we were, I think we were crying over the last two years because it was heartbreaking to see what was happening to a lot of people, especially yeah. first time home buyers. I mean, we deal with a lot of first time home buyers. It was, it was horrible, yeah. it, you know, to watch them. I mean, we have people that we started working with three years ago, right before COVID hit and it, they're kicking themselves now for not, you know, because they were waiting for the perfect house. And back then we at least had some inventory. I mean, we were still historically low and you asked me about the fed. I think he's already done his job as far as real estate. I, I think we've already had somewhat of a reset and we'll see more of the effects of that as time goes on. I still don't see a crash because nobody's, we, I mean, we all agree. Nobody's going to let go of these 3%, 4% interest rates. And I, and I agree, if, if they can get fuel under control and they can, even if the rates are down at five and three quarters, six, I mean, I've, we just, uh, Pat and I have got somebody under contract right now and I, he got a good deal on the house. We got him a two, one buy down. We got his closing costs covered and we had that conversation prior to him buying. You're going to stay in the house three to five years, correct? And then you'll be okay. And he's, he knows, he's like, I know I may be a little underwater, especially because it was a VA and he's putting nothing down. There's, there's no skin in there. Um, and he's okay with it. So I'm still seeing those buyers out of necessity buy. And there is still a whole slew of people out there that didn't get the opportunity. So. Well, yeah. And, and, and then Pat, you mentioned something a while back. We we're talking about, you know, the, Federal Reserve is going to get rates up, slow things down so they can kind of reload their gun. You know, if, if things are turning, they can, you know, do some more quantitative easing. But I went back and looked and said, you know, what do we compare to 2022 uh, to historically? 2008? No, nope, whole different animal. Um, I went back to 1979 to 83. And actually, I went back and looked at um, debt to GDP government debt. And we hit a high of 114% after World War II. So we had a lot of, lot of debt. And then when Paul Volcker raised things in 1979, our debt to GDP was only 33%. Hmm. So to get out from underneath the, the harm that was done in the housing market was a lot easier then. In other words, you might remember Reagan passed all these tax cuts and everybody mm -hmm. was having an absolute fit. How dare he? And, and yet we had the room to do it because we were sitting at 38%. He got us down to 31% of GDP because the economy kicked up quite a bit. Remember it was growing like 8%. Mm -hmm. uh, but what concerns me now is we're 125.3% of GDP. So that's telling you that the pressure on rates is going to be really focused on that amount of debt. So how much is the Fed really going to have when they reload their gun? Yeah, uh, that's true. Well, I, so I think, you know, like you said, not to get political, but I think if we get a change in November, I think they will at least stop um, 
put a stop to some of the spending and maybe turn it around eventually. You know, that's all I can hope for. Well, all of yeah, this they're is still the spending a very slow moving machine. Yeah. And it's going to take time. And like right. you said, we got this bridge we got to cross and it's probably a very, very long bridge. I, I got to share something with you here. That's just kind of interesting to me there. Have you guys heard of broker agent advisor? You've probably no. seen them on Facebook where they put these things out there and you know, Oh yes. Yes. Okay. You got five star. Well, I mean, they just send you an email and say, you know, Hey, apply for this. We're going to check out your credentials. And then they, they call you a, a five star, whatever. Well, now I'm getting an email saying that all I have to do is subscribe to their YouTube channel and click on this link and they will send me my certificate as being in the top 100 agents <laughs> in the country. I'm number 3,560 in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> so when I see those, that these guys post on Facebook, like, okay. <laughs> but That's I, funny. I, but what do you mean I'm top 100? What? So I, I don't even know if they, they probably just look and see, you know, do you have any um, judgments against you or anything like that? But there's, yeah. there's uh, no, I, crazy. I got one of those when I had the worst year ever in real estate terrible Shit. year i was barely getting by and they sent me a certificate <laughs> that's funny and my golly i put it i'll make face. you one yeah <laughs> hey we're still planning our uh our meet and greet i'm hoping i can finalize the location today uh we're going to move it to chandler uh because gilbert was uh number one prohibitively expensive no matter where i went if you wanted to get a room and you want to the least space and i want a place where we can where we can mingle so i've i've got it down to two places craft 64 in chandler's which is a pizza place that has a neat really nice outdoor patio and they can accommodate us and then the courthouse which is uh kind of a, a brew pub and they have a pizza place there as, as well and a great place to mingle so i need to nail that down today and what i'm going to do is i will post a link and people can fill out the form that they're going to attend but when we hit 30 i got to turn it off because uh, that's really all we have room for and uh so i will let you know i will probably come out with a separate video that says hey here's what we're doing and click the link below and, and sign up so i'm getting ready to do that but the date is going to be november 16th so cancel everything you have <laughs> and uh pat uh, has his karaoke machine and yep. uh did you try on that leisure suit uh, it didn't fit, so we're, right. we're, we're moving on that. So, what about his leprechaun suit? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, do that, baby. Yeah, I can you do a leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, so we're good. And Jackie right. and Ruby, you guys are bringing fabulous prizes, right? So. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, look, look forward to seeing everybody. Uh, thank you for being on the show, and we will talk to you both later. All righty, have a good week, everybody. Take have care. a great day. Bye bye.